this feels good. Come up by the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved? Or are things just as you left them yesterday? Uh, uh, it's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove and, you know, Frank. Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself, Well, I Mr. Could... Hale, just tell us what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Harry and I had started to town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road to my place, and as I got here, I said, I'm going to see if I get John Ray to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke about it to him once before, and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway. All he asked was to be some quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself. But I thought maybe if I went to his house and talked about it for his wife, though I said to Harry I didn't know it was his wife wanted, it made much difference to John. Um, let's talk about that later. Mr. Hale, I do want to talk about that, but just tell me what happened when you got to the house. Well, I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked on the door, and still it was all quiet inside. So I knocked again. I thought I heard somebody say come in, but I'm not sure, and I wasn't sure yet. But I opened the door, this door, and there, in that rocker, sounds is right. And what was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hands and was kind of pleading it. And how did she look? She looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next, kind of done up. Hmm. How did she feel about your coming? I, I don't think she minded one way or another. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do you miss, right? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? Kind of when I'm playing at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. Well, I thought of hearing the team outside. So I said a little sharp, can't I see John? No, she says, kind of dull like, ain't he home, says I. Yes, says she, he's home. Then why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded, not even getting a bit excited, just rocking back and forth. Why, where is he? She just pointed upstairs, like that. Well, I caught up with the idea of going up there. Well, I asked her, why, what happened? He died of a rope around his neck, said she. I thought I might need some help. I went out and called Harry. We went upstairs, and there he was lying. Um, I think I'd rather you go into that upstairs, where you can point it all out. Just go on with the rest of the story. My first thought was to get that rope off. I thought I looked. But, Harry... He went up to him. He said, no, he's dead all right, and we better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Well, has anybody been notified, I asked. No, she says. Who did this, Mrs. Wright? Says Harry. He said all business-like, and she stopped cleaning up her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she, unconcerned. But weren't you sleeping in the bed next to him, says Harry. Yes, says she, but I was sleeping on the inside. What, so someone strangled him and put a rope around his neck and you didn't wake up, says Harry. No, I didn't wake up, says she. We must have looked as if we couldn't see how that could be, for after a minute, she says, I sleep sound. Harry was going to ask more questions, but I thought... Maybe we ought to let her tell her story to the coroner first, or the sheriff. So Harry went as fast as he could to the river's place, where there's a telephone. And what did Miss Wright say when she knew you'd gone to the coroner? Well, she moved from that chair to this one over here. I just sat there with her hands held together and looking down. I got a feeling I ought to make some conversation. So I told her I wanted to come in and see if John wanted to go on a telephone. That, she started to laugh. 
even looked at me scared. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon after, Harry came, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, and Mr. Peters. And I guess that's all I know that you don't. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn. Um, you're convinced there's nothing important here? Nothing that would point to any motive? Uh, nothing here but kitchen things. Hmm. Ugh, here's a nice mess. Oh, fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Well, can you beat the woman? Held for murder and worrying about her preserves. I guess before we are through with her, she might have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Dirty towels? Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there's some dicks in county farmhouses which do not have such uh, roller towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Miss Wright were neighbors, I suppose. You were friends, too? I've not seen much of her in the late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives had their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I wouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know as Bright had either. You mean that they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. I just think a place would not be any more cheerful for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk to you more about that a little later. I want to get on... I want to go upstairs and get the lay on things. I'd hate to have men coming into my kitchen snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came in to make the fire might have got a little of this on. I wish I thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her when she had to come away in such a hurry. It's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some here. That's all right, Mrs. Peters. Yes, here. This is cherries, too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all of her hard work in the hot summers. I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. Well, I must get those things from the front room closet. You coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. Nice. It's cold in there. Right was close. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part, and you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. She used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, that was over 30 years ago. Isn't this all you was to take in? She said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows, but I suppose just to make her feel a bit more natural. She said it was in the top drawer in this, yes, here. And then her little shawl that always hung behind the door. Yes, here it is. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale? Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, no, I don't think she did. Asking for her apron and word about her shawl, word about her fruit. Mr. Peters says it looks awful bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in his speech and 
He'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house and he said that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said that coming out that what was needed for the case was a motive, something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. How do you suppose they're doing with the evidence upstairs? I hope she had it a little more right up up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking, locking her up in town and then coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her? Well, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't feel them when you go out. Hmm. She was piecing a quilt. It's the log cabin pattern. Pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was gonna quilt it or just knot it. Uh, uh, they wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. <laughs> uh, Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Well, let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know, as there's anything so strange, our taking up our time while they're waiting, that while we're waiting for them to get the evidence, I don't see as it's anything to laugh about. Of course they've got awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this one. Here, this is the one she was working on and look at the sewing. All the rest of it had been so nice and even in, look at this, it's all over the place. Why it looks as if she didn't know what she was about. Oh, uh, Mrs. Hale, what are you doing? Just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very well. Bad sewing always made me fidgety. I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale? What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find a piece of paper and string. In that cupboard, maybe. Why, here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Well, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here for so long. It's, there was a man around last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here, but she must have had one or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it. No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats being afraid of them. One time my cat got in her room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. <laughs> my sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Why look, the door, it's broke. One hinge is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be lonesome for me sitting here alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I'd come over here when she was here. I wish I had. But, uh, of course you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale. Your house, your children. I could have come. I, 
I stayed away because it weren't very cheerful and that's why I ought to have come. I don't know, I, I never liked this place, maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the main road, but it always was a creepy place and I just wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. Well, you mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house and ride out to work all day and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. He didn't drink and kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts, but he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters, just to spend the time and day with him. Like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird, but what do you think went with it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised around here, were you? Did you know her? Not till they brought her in yesterday. She, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real pretty and fluttery, but, but timid and sweet. How she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take that quilt in with you? It might make up her mind. Why, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I think? I, I wonder where her patches are and her things. Mm, here's some red. I expect this has got some sewing things in it. What a pretty box. Looks like something somebody would give you. I expect her scissors are in here. <laughs> Why, there's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. Why, this isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... It's, it's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, look at it. it it's neck, look, look at its neck. It's all uh, other side too. Somebody wrung its neck. Uh, well, ladies, have you decided whether she was gonna quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to um, knot it. <laughs> well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. No sign at all of anybody coming from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and over piece by piece. She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in a pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatch before I could get there, before I could stop him. If they hadn't held me back, I would have, it would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem. I never have had any children around and, no, right wouldn't like a bird, a thing that sang. She used to sing and he killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing that was done in this house that night. Killing a man while he slept, slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed the bird. We don't know. If there had been years and years of nothing and then a bird to sing to you, it, it would be awful still after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota, my first baby died. After he was two years old, me with no other than... How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? 
I, I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore her white dress with her blue ribbons and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I, I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Miss Peters. We live close together and we live far apart. We, we all go through the same thing. It's just a different kind of the same thing. <laughs> My, it's a good thing the men could hear us. Wouldn't they just laugh, getting all stirred over, over like a thing like a dead canary, as if that could have anything to do with, <laughs> <sighs> Wouldn't they laugh? <laughs> Maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear, except for a reason for doing it. But you know, juries, when it comes to women, it's for some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. <sighs> well, I've got the team around. It's pretty cold out there. I'm going to stay here a while by myself. You can send Frank out, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. Do you want to see what Miss Peters is going to take in? <laughs> oh, I guess they're not very dangerous things. The ladies have picked out. <sighs> no, Miss Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think about it that way, Miss Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, what do you call it, ladies? We call it, not it, Mr. Henderson. <laughs>